morning ye. Morning. Morning, Samia. Hey, morning, guys. How are you? Hello, Samia. Doing well. Nice, thank you. Yeah, I have a bad connection, so I'll just disable the camera. How are you doing, Samia? Yeah, doing well. Doing well. I saw some activity regarding uh, some of the PRs uh, getting closed and some clarification from Shiwei. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm guessing you guys have. Um, looked at the uh, proposed uh, alpha 3 uh, release notes that I've shared. Yeah, yeah. I see you have mentioned these release notes in our agenda. Yeah. I think we can have a quick look today. OK, sounds good. Yeah, we'll wait for everybody to join. And uh, I see Steve is at IETF uh, meeting this week, so I think he might, he might not join us today. OK. What about uh, David? I think David would be. OK. Yeah, I think what, I, what we want to do is you know, agree on the uh, alpha 3 content. I think we know that we have made a decision in the last meeting to have an alpha 3 before RC1. And uh, we shall uh, push to have uh, content in alpha 3, which is close to being ready or already ready and gives a consistent user experience. Uh, that's the way I'm thinking about getting Alpha 3 out. Um, question here. Uh, since we, um, I and E are not, uh, are not attending the last community call, uh, so uh, do we have plan to skip the Alpha 3, uh, Alpha 2 release, sorry, Alpha 2. Well, Alpha 2 has already happened. Uh, alpha 2 yeah. did already happen. Uh, so Alpha 2 is complete. It was done back in February. Mm -hmm. So we should be looking at Alpha 3 now. Yeah, I mean, do we have a plan to release this milestone? Oh, the Alpha 2 milestone. Uh, I, I believe we released the Alpha 2 milestone. Am I missing something? Um, I guess we, we have only Alpha 1. In June. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a disconnect. We like tell me what you're seeing, which makes you think we have not officially released Alpha Two, because I believe we have done an Alpha Two formal release already. The Alpha. The, okay, let me share uh, this link. I don't know if you. Yeah, but it seems that we didn't find the uh, the releases the the packages. Uh, I thought we did. Look at this uh, this page. Uh, the roadmap page I just shared. Um, and in it, if you scroll down, at the bottom, you will see uh, the releases we were targeting and the releases we have done. So there's alpha one and alpha two release notes available already. Alpha three is what uh, we were uh, thinking about merging with RC1. But I think after last week's meetings, we have decided to have Alpha 3 be a standalone milestone okay. by itself and then do RC1 later. So I think for Alpha 2, we only had spec changes out, not notation ones. Correct. That may be the confusion. Yes, that yeah. may be the confusion. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if you look at the release notes for Alpha 2, it's following that link. We clearly specify that notation client did not change in Alpha 2. Uh -huh. So okay. Mm. Does make sense. Thank okay, you, Ritesh. So, yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think we have a quorum here, so we can go down the list of agenda items we have. And again, this being the technical meeting, we'll give priority to any technical items first. Uh, Welcome back, Shiva. Yes, uh, back to you. Uh, let's see who has the first agenda item. Yeah, welcome back, Shui. Uh, lots of PRs to review. I don't know whose PRs are these I'm checking. Yeah, uh, actually we have a couple of new PRs that are pending for review. 
uh, yeah, raised by Microsoft engineers. So I think Chameleon or British, you might have to help us take a look and uh, to see if there is any comments or changes we need to do. Uh, I will take a look at some by tomorrow end of day. Okay. I think it's going to be, good. for me, it's going to be a little more difficult. I'm on call next two weeks, starting this week. Um, I think, let me open all of the PRs. So we can see. The switch from the CLI switch from UR Fave to Cobra. Shiva, will you be able to look at that? I'm fine with two PRs, two reviews. I mean, the criteria that we set was two reviews and either one approval from you or me or a review, code review from you or me. So either way works for that PR. Uh, can you write it down so we can uh, always refer to that guideline? <laughs> yes. Um, I I have a draft I haven't submitted. Um, all right, I'll I'll try to get that in on Thursday. So that's right. so that's for this PR. Um, the unit test one. That's a smaller one than the artifact pack. I think, yeah, even that we can look at. There's another PR from uh, from Rakesh that I want to highlight. So I think I need one of either Shiva's review here or Pratesh's review here. This implements the end-to-end uh, X509 signing scheme signature verification, and it ties together the trust policy, trust store, all of that stuff. So all of verify is enabled by this PR. Can Pratesh or Shiva take a look at this? It's a pretty, I think it's a pretty involved PR, especially for the, yeah, I think the way Rakesh uh, made this is all of the earlier PRs were smaller components of the verification process and this ties, ties all of those together. Okay, uh, for this uh, 79, uh, I will take a look this week. Okay, that's good. And there are a few from Pratesh on signing scheme. The spec got approved last week. Um, there's something related to verification plugins. That spec also got approved on Friday. So yeah, let's track this back on Thursday. Um, I will add the other set of PRs in here and also send a message on the channel. Yeah, uh, by the way, can you, uh, 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 can you say the uh, review guideline again? I'll put a draft in um, and we can, before, like I'm, I'm sure there'll be comments related to it and we'll have to fine tune a bit. Let me see if I can put the draft in by the end of this meeting as a discussion. Yeah, sure. Because I need to merge uh, those PRs. So uh, we are unblocked. <laughs> Otherwise yeah, we yeah. cannot continue our work. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll let me put the draft in. So Mila, you are working on a uh, review guide or a notary? Yeah, this is for all of the implementation PRs where um, 
she and me got added to the notation maintainers. So we said we need two code reviews and approval from the notation maintainers group to merge it. That was the criteria. So I'll 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 put I'll put that in as a discussion. That'll be the first draft. Sounds great. And I see your notes. Okay, uh, if we have handled the PR items, let's move on to, let's see any of the technical items here. Um, I'm scrolling through the list. I see the fourth bullet, uh, review the proposal on weekly build for notation. I think this is something we should discuss before we jump into project planning items. Uh, who added that? I think it was you, David, or ye, it was you who added. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, sorry, it's me. I. I put some details in the discussion, so uh, I'm not sure whether you uh, you already reviewed uh, it. So it's better to uh, take a look and uh, provide your comments uh, under that discussion thread. So if uh, if we all agree this is the way forward, then we can start to uh, think about how how can we achieve this weekly build. I think maybe you can share a screen and uh, give a quick showcase to this discussion. Then people may understand. Okay, uh, let me do it. Can you see it? Yes, I yeah. can see it. Yeah, it's uh, actually it's a dis discussion spread for the for the next step uh, of a notation weekly build. Uh, I see uh, people already uh, had a discussion on the another dis uh, a discussion spread prepared by David. Uh, mentioned about uh, uh, some type of build and also uh, also feature uh, feature uh, readiness status. So this is uh, actually a complement for for uh, David uh, discussion. Um, the rest now here is that uh, especially for the notation CLI, uh, we see the re release frequency is very low. The last release is on June. Uh, and actually, uh, I also uh, did try to build uh, the notation uh, binary, the CLI from the main branch. However, uh, some commands are broken due to due to some feature development. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, so the at the current state states we, we, we don't know the the quality and it will be a be a big risk if we want to release. Uh, a future milestone, uh, and also so many commits and the files change the comparing to uh, last release. So that's the proposal for weekly uh, dev build. At least we, we can uh, make sure as the build is successful weekly and also the basic function uh, is not broken, especially later we have uh, some feature uh, stable feature released, we can make sure that uh, the feature is not uh, is not broken. And also later later on, we can uh, start to mark features with different uh, readiness status, for example, alpha beta stable, and also we can introduce basic end to end test cases, the CLI test cases, uh, into the uh, weekly build uh, process, so that we can make sure uh, everything works fine. So yeah, 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 this is the proposal. Uh, yeah, so this is Samir, I'll share my feedback. Uh, I think uh, this uh, are some questions first. This is for the notation uh, CLI or client only, or is it for 
uh, including doing a separate release build for uh, the uh, re, uh, the uh, libraries as well. Uh, uh, I think if uh, uh, the library changes, uh, which uh, reflecting that uh, the CLI behavior changes, I think we we uh, we also needed to check this build. So then I would, the, um, I would, yeah, I would, I mean, one suggestion um, would be if, um, so we don't have to build all three of the repos, um, would be to have a way to automate the Go dependencies in the notation CLI to be like kind of whatever's at main. Um, and then, and then that way you don't necessarily have to build all, all three of them. Um, and you get the, the benefit of, of basically getting whatever is the latest on on uh, the dependent notation go notation cargo. That's I don't know, just an idea, just so we don't have to have you know multiple um, you know other builds of the other two two repos that achieves the same goal. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. Like if you just if you just take the if you just take the go go dot mod file and then and then for as part of the build process you just point to whatever uh, is at at the main commit at that point in time then that'll basically get the same thing versus you know an actual build of the API which is going to give you a nice GoLang package but uh, the downside is you have a lot more you know packages that are up there. Um, and you may not be using this anyway. Yeah, this is weird. I don't understand all the technical part of it, but what, what I was going with this is, will we generate a release notes to go along with that? And, uh, and hence, if it's just notation CLI release only going out, I think I am, I'm actually happy with that idea. The other feedback I have is, uh, I think it's probably too early to mark things as alpha, beta, or stable in the notation CLI release at this point. So it's a, we could take it as a future goal, but I'm all, or I'm supportive of the idea of a, of a weekly build. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like a good idea to me. Yes, that, uh, thanks uh, Samuel. The, the feature status, we can do it later. It's, uh, it, it's optional for this weekly uh, dev build at this moment. So yeah, so so why I mentioned this is that uh, if we have a, uh, a weekly build, so if uh, uh, other users want to try some features, they can they can uh, try it and provide us uh, early feedback. But uh, it's better that we can uh, inform that which uh, the feature status, so so that there will be no surprise for them uh, because maybe some feature is all only in uh, our status. So that's the purpose, but uh, it, it's not a mandatory for this weekly that build uh, this proposal. Yeah, we can do it later. Okay, I have no other questions or comments. Milan, Pratish, yeah, think, do you have any things? Yeah, I think the only thing in my mind practically, I mean, it, other than the, the notation main commit references for the build um, would just be the day, maybe the day of the week that we want to do the build, um, and then the actual um, like name, if we want to, you know, the naming scheme we want to do, like, you know, if we want to just do dash dev, or you know, how we want to, how we want to have that go out, you know, that's that's the only other. Those are the only things I can think of in terms of implementation. David, you, you mean this uh, versioning for for the build, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Because we don't we don't want like uh, we don't like. I mean, we want to have a separate release channel, um, and so we need to have a way that it does. People don't just like through whatever packaging systems they have just automatically download the late the weekly dev build. Um, I I mean I would have to like. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I just I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but we, we want to do regular releases. And so we'd likely just have the existing release template we have, um, you know, maybe with a slight modification and then have it automated, right? Um, like on a, 
a cron job kind of thing or, or a schedule, right? Um, and then it's just where do we want to push that? Uh, you know, what what's the naming scheme we want to use so that it doesn't impact, you know, whatever other systems that are that are there for people just discovering the latest dev build versus you know the release that's there. Mm. Do I have some off the cuff ideas on the naming scheme? Just keep it the date of the, just keep it the date on which the build occurs. And so that we know it's not our regular Semver versioning and people can't confuse it with a formal release. That will be my suggestion to use just DDMMYY for naming. Okay, uh, if nobody has any other questions on it, I think uh, what we're saying here is a good idea. Somebody has to work on it and uh, let's keep it simple initially and then we can layer more things on it such as later once we see it working reliably mm. for things like uh, uh, alpha beta for different features coming in. Let's keep it simple initially. This would be my recommendation. Yeah. Thanks, Samuel. I think later I will uh, create a, a several issue uh, pointing to this the discussion so that the uh, team can start working uh, the weekly build. Uh, so let's try it so uh, we, we, we can iterate it uh, uh, step by step. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have nothing else. If nobody else has anything on it, we can go back to the next agenda item then. Yeah, then I stop share. Let's see, what was the next one? Notary planning board updates. Most of the issues of assignees now. Yeah, that was one thing we were looking at last time to have make sure assignees are, we can pull them for status or they can inform us. Who wants to share the screen with the latest uh, program board? Uh, maybe I can share again. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, I have a small screen today, so. Uh, no problem. Uh... Yeah, let me find the project board. Uh, so do we want to work through the upper three or we just mentioned the, the updates? Actually, uh, yesterday, uh, Femin, Shiri and I, we, we created a new status so that it can clearly indicate uh, the current status for 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 the issue then we 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 know that we need to take action for for the status if it is in the pr review so it's actually uh, blocking team's work so we created this uh, status we, we think this status is uh, is very clear to reflect current status Are we, uh, otherwise it will be always in progress uh, we, we don't know uh, if it takes too long time so, so we created this uh, status. We, we can start to use this one. Oh, I like it. So this status only shows up in the program board or is it only sh it also shows up in the individual issue or PR as well? Uh, let me check maybe. Uh, it's good to the... people who know how to <laughs> work GitHub. I didn't know how to work this, but thank you for doing this. Yeah, you, you can see on the issues right side, there is this status. Yep, for inside the project, yes, I see that. And then yeah. you can just change it there. Yes. Okay, that's great. I think uh, this is something, uh, I think the maintainers also asked to give visibility, so this is great. Yeah, so so if we have this upper three uh, milestone prepared, so uh, people can walk through all the issues here and check the status. So if it requires PR review, I think uh, the maintainers needed to take some action on it. So we don't have to every time uh, sync it uh, uh, during the committee call, we, we can do it async if we can uh, make the status uh, clearly. Uh, this is one thing we update and we also assign people to uh, uh, issues from, from our side. Okay. At least for, yeah, for our three and also uh, for RC1, uh, we also did the same thing. We assign people from our side for 
for the issues we can work on. And for issues need a PR review, we marked the uh, PR review status. Uh, yeah, well, one thing we, uh, we think we need to remove some duplicate uh, issues. We see that uh, I also uh, add some comments here for some issues. We see here for signing and the verifying command, we have actually three issues. So we need to close two of them. Yeah, I, I, I reported the same thing uh, a week or two ago, but we didn't close those issues. So I'm glad you guys have seen that as well. Uh, I think there was some difference in difference in so, opinion about, is it a user story we are closing or is it a implementation? Uh, yeah. Because the user story is more broad than just a CLI command. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, this ties right into the conversation uh, Samir and I had uh, last quarter. Friday um, about about kind of the trajectory going forward. Um, I think I think the the roadmap repo we want to have as the kind of the place where we do the higher level user stories. Um, and today the duplication that you're seeing there is because some of the stuff that's in roadmap really is is more of a implementation kind of detail, like you know implement the CLI right for notation CLI, which should be really an item in the notation CLI, uh, or sorry, the notation repo. And so we have we have one example of what him and I worked through. Uh, it's not the best example, but it still gives the, the idea of the format we want to have moving forward, um, that where I actually closed out the user story from notation and moved it over to the, to the roadmap repo. Um, and so I think that's that's kind of what needs to happen for the rest of the roadmap items that are there to kind of be scrubbed and then put into that format so we can remove a lot of the confusion and the duplication. Um, I think the issue that I closed in the notary project, uh, it references it. Um, if you want to go to that issue in the notary project, you could check it out. I can, I don't, I'm not in a place where I could place the link, but um, Samir, I know if you want to, if you want to link or bring that up, you can you can show that. It was the issue. It was the issue that was from a long time ago about should we have the roadmap repo? And you and I had a bit of a dialogue on that. And then I, based on our conversation on Friday, I think we were we basically came to the same all all the same conclusion with the example, and that's that's all linked to in that issue. Yes. So yeah, I think this is a good thing for the community to know, right? I agree with you, David, that we have agreed to keep the roadmap repo, keep it at a high level, uh, user story base going forward. And then I think on the work to clean it up, I think we can do it incrementally to clean it up or maybe one fine day, uh, we, based on who is assigned what, they convert it into, the, into that format, um, the user story format in the roadmap repo at least and then we can close it. So I think uh, looking at the items remaining in the roadmap repo, uh, can we go, can we look at them quickly one by one? Uh, Femin, or who's you, are you sharing your screen? Yeah, you, you want to open the roadmap? No, 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 uh, we yeah. don't have to open it. I just wanna come top down and just, can you filter out the items which are done? And uh, so, so you can just do a control F and just say minus done in your, uh, yeah, we actually have a tab for that. Um, I posted it in the link between the four of us, the PMs here. Uh, it's actually up there. It's uh, items done. I think it, uh, let's see, it's open, open and done, or done and no release. Done and no release is uh, items that haven't been put into a public release yet, but that are showing as complete. Done dash no release right there. Okay, so where I was going with this is anything which is not done, as a roadmap item, whoever is assigned to that, if they can convert it into a user story, I'll be fine. So it reads like a user story, but let's keep the uh, roadmap item alive because that's the way we have been tracking so far. And if you wanna close anything, you can close a duplicate in um, in a notation repo or, or some other repo, but keep the roadmap item alive if you can, uh, because that's the one by which we have been measuring are we ready for the next release or not? And uh, you can link multiple items to that. And I have a small screen, David, today. 
So I'm trying uh, okay. yeah, to no see worries. how to share. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there will be there will be some cases where, like, like for instance, you have uh, like a a roadmap item is um, maybe an implementation type one, um, and then there's a there's a spec one, or there's a, there's kind of two that relate to the same user story. In which case, I uh, you know I would say well we might need to delete one, but that's not that it goes away. It's just that um, that the implementation part is on a on the separate repo, and then still the intent is the, is the same. So you convert, let's say, one of them, and then the other one you you may you may delete because it's in a it's in a sub repo, right? Okay, so let's take an action item that we can record. What we are saying here is for anything in the roadmap repo, and uh, actually let me write it down. It'll be easier if I write it down in the in the agenda meeting. Uh, you guys can see it as the life. For anything in the roadmap repo, whoever has it assigned, could they close any duplicates in another repo and or link them to the roadmap item? Keep the roadmap item op open until until. Uh, so we, we basically, get... yeah, we basically will migrate our existing user stories that we have in notation, which is what I did for the one example that we that we did together, Spear and I did together, um, yep. and then and then delete the one the user story from the or close I should say the, the user story from the notation repo, and then you know it's basically almost a it should be in most cases a copy paste of the user story and we, we just for for historical purposes we kept the the old kind of name of it below so the one we had or the description or whatever that was in there just so that that was I guess there um, but but then we also added in right uh, the hierarchical kind of uh, linking which is which is what uh, I, I showed Samir on Friday so that that way it pulls it all together. So mm -hmm. you'll have you'll have the roadmap item, and then you'll have n number of linked items to the note all the all the three repos below it. Yeah, I highlighted I, I put this in the comment on the issue that we closed um, in the notary project repo. I right, we'll just have to paste a link to it in the in the the hack notes. Okay, if, uh, okay. so I. I tried to describe what we just agreed on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do we want to move forward? I don't know if there are other items we want to have. Yeah, let's move forward. Uh, I think the next one is create a review process guide and onboard new qualified maintainers. I don't understand this. Whoever added could expand on it. Um, let me clarify this item. Um, I think as for the review process guide, I mean, he's, he's started working on this. So I'm, I just want to confirm which repo Milan will submit this guide to. Maybe we need a community repo or we can maintain this in which repo, I'm not sure. And uh, for, for onboarding, you qualify maintenance. Uh, the purpose is just to accelerate the review process, you know, Right now, we have only two active uh, maintainers here, uh, Shui and the million for code review. So I think we might promote uh, at least two um, maintainers in our community who can help us with you know, uh, peer review. I think, uh, okay, so I, posted the, I posted the link there in the chat. Uh, if that can be opened and on screen share. Okay, I, I will open it. Uh, let me try it. Two, six, three, right? Yeah. C can I see it now? Yeah, so this, this is again, just a draft for getting us started. We can tweak with the language and 
then decide which repository it goes into. Uh, it probably should go into notation uh, where we have like overall development contributing guidelines. Um, to answer uh, Finman's question, I think the two maintainers are for approval. That, that should not be a roadblock. So we have two groups. One is the code reviewers group. I think it has around 10, 11 members. And the subgroup maintainers has the overall notary V2 maintainers from each of the organization. Plus it has Shiva and me. So we have a good pool of code reviewers right now, but the gating is through Shiva or me to say two reviews did occur, two reviews are of good quality, or say there is one review and the second review is done by either Shiva and me, and then we merge it. So I'm happy with the process that is in place right now. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah, and taking a look at this discussion, I think uh, we can also help to polish this criteria and uh, submit it as, a, as an official release guide in the community. Yeah, there's there's some language update. I'll 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 tweak it a little bit. Um, for example, it needs to maintain that mention that code reviews from open source community, uh, everyone else is welcome and encouraged. It's just that in the current phase, the two code reviews that are counted needs to be from the code reviewers group. Yeah, and, and merge is done only by the maintainers, right? Yeah, merge is done only by the maintainers. Okay. Awesome. I'll actually edit and number it so that in future discussions we can yeah, we can go through specific points. Uh, okay, I see. Uh third one is both reviewers may be from the same maintainer organization if a PR has been open for more than a week. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we need some escape world. <laughs> Uh, okay, number them if you can refer. Okay. Yeah. Again, this is a good start. We can tweak it around a bit. And yeah, I know. I know that still uh, the the one thing is to get the the actual the code reviewers group to be able to be assigned to to the group for reviewers and uh. I know Steve is out this week, but uh, I know that's one thing we need to get fixed. Hopefully that will um, help a little bit. Could Niaz or you fix it? Do you have permissions, David? Uh, I don't I don't know if, if, if you do or not. I think Niaz should. I mean, he should be able to. I'll so check with he, Niaz. He, I saw your comment yeah. on adding the read permission on it. Yeah, it's not usable right now, the code reviewers group. Right, I think that'll really help as a whole because then you get you're not pinging one person or trying to tag every single individual. Like at least there's a group that goes out, but it's just a permissions thing, which I think only Niaz and Steve and I think still ch technically Justin McCormack uh, would have the ability to 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 do. Sounds good. I'll I'll follow up with Niaz if I can. Okay. Then okay, I'll cool. I'll ping Steve offline. Cool. Thanks. And I think uh, there's one more question, Milan. Uh, which repo should this go in? Uh, I think it can go inside the notation repo because this is for code reviews, so it's fine for it yeah. to live inside. Yeah, okay. for notation, yes. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I think then we just so, move on to the, go ahead. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> if we put this uh, guide in notation repo, does it be capable for other code repos? You know, we have notation go and the notation call go. Yeah, we can mention that here. Again, that's, that's what, this is a draft. We can add in all the, that this is applicable for all the implementation repos, which is currently the notation, notation core go and uh, notation go. As for the criteria five, so does it mean uh, the PR merge permission is only granted to the members of notation subgroup maintainers? Uh, that is right. Okay. So that currently has Steve, Justin, Niaz, me and Shiva. 
uh, but mostly me and Shiva are supposed to kind of exercise that by looking at the code reviews that were done and if it's in a good place to be merged. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think it's just, I think that the, a lot of the delay is, has, is in getting the actual two code reviews. Um, that's That's been a lot of the delay, I think. It's not the, I don't know, maybe not as much of the maintainers clicking merge, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, it's also the volume of work. I think last month yep. or so we have had two, like, a lot of designs or specs getting approved and implementations being followed up yep. pretty fast. Yep. Okay. Uh, any other questions on that topic? Uh, as an example to the uh, notes I just took for the uh, for the uh, work, which I'm asking whoever has a roadmap item assigned if they can if they can do that. I'm giving the example here. So I've just added the example that uh, was mentioned by David that what he and I worked on together on Friday. Example here. So here we had a very specific CLI roadmap item. In, and we converted it into a user story and linked it to the other dependent work happening in other places, which will help us close it once those PRs are merged. Um, and at this point, I, I will suggest we don't change any milestones uh, because I think we have not had our discussions on things we wanna bring into RC1 or not. Uh, so let's keep the milestones uh, outside of it. Uh, um, uh, we should definitely hit the milestones on Thursday, if not earlier, in Slack. Uh, but that's my suggestion. Okay. Yeah, uh, makes okay. sense. The, 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 I was just just one small comment on this one. The only reason why I say it's not the perfect example is because it kind of has. We've kind of already partially completed this work, um, so that's why we added the, the CLI support at the end, which then kind of makes the scope a little weird and smaller, but um, I hope, hopefully at least everyone can get the idea of the, of the pattern, or at least, um, you know, at least Samir and I are, are in sync. And I think you and Finman, if you have any questions, let me know. But I, I think it should be pretty straightforward in terms of how, how we're moving up kind of over. Right. And, and, let on, me know. and on yeah, I'm with you, David. Like, I think this will be an incremental role on converting it. It's not blocking progress, uh, as long as we know that we all see we have lots of duplicates that we that will get closed once we align it, and it's not blocking progress. So I think I'm fine with a slow roll on this one if it takes longer to get it right. But because we are not blocking yep. Milind or uh, yep. Shiva as an example. Right, mm -hmm. right. And the only thing I think we will want to do is when we, we cut alpha two or three or what, this this temporary release, like some some of the things that are complete in RC1 uh, are listed as RC1 milestone are already done that we'll want to put into yes. alpha release. Yes. So in that case, we'll need to just kind of probably move the milestones and such. Yes, I agree with that uh, discussion. Let me know. Any items completed? It's marked for RC1, which is completed or will be completed at the time of alpha three should be included in alpha three. Okay, that's fair. Uh, actually, so I took a stab on what should go in alpha three. And again, we, I was working backwards from giving experience so that somebody can start using notation with the latest things we have been putting into it over the last two months, such as the new ORAS client libraries, which allow it to work with the RC1 ORAS spec. As an example, we have a new trust store based on directory structure, a new trust policy uh, with, uh, with with scoping information. So we have lots of work that we want people to start using. So based on that, I took a stab at a proposed release notes. Uh, I did not do a PR on it. I could do a PR. I have a PR ready to go in my private, in my private fork uh, or private uh, area. But if you gonna, guys wanna take a five minutes and read the proposed alpha three uh, notes, 
or alpha three release draft notes and give feedback, then I can do a formal PR on it. Uh, and we can probably even close it before Thursday. So if you can read the uh, alpha three release notes and give feedback. Mm. Yeah, I, I will do it. Mm. Yeah, we can read it right, right now. We have 15 minutes. If you can take five, six minutes to see if you can answer any questions. Yeah, I think um, I think the only thing it's just maybe the uh, slightly like some of the things that are broken currently that we need to decide if we want to spend some time to fix those or not. Um, I, I do think that that's something we need to kind of flush out. Um, it, uh, yeah. So I know I know you had like one issue that is kind of top of mind um, around just the basic kind of flow that's in the docs and the local signing thing going um there's some other smaller things but i i do think in lieu in light of not having um you know the one of the methods mentioned which it seems like a lot of people are are jiving on with the kind of which features are in experimental phase or not uh then you know we need to have some form of baseline what should we expect to function or not um, for even if it's an alpha three? Um, yeah. Yeah, David, I don't disagree with you. Like we need to be clear, clear about what works and what does not work uh, in our release notes for sure. I'm just torn if we should invest in adding um, time now to fix things which are not working or just marking them as in code as not supported uh, and then handle them in RC1. So yeah, yeah, I'm less, I'm, I'm, I'm less, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to, to hold up the alpha release for that, that new functionality for sure. Um, I, I don't, don't want to do that. Um, I, I'm just thinking of more of like sign verify yes. <laughs> workflows that are kind of fundamental, um, that, that are, that seem to be broken. Um, that, that, that's all. Uh, yeah, actually yeah. let's, let's talk about that. So, uh, Milad on, uh, Actually, Yi, have you raised that issue? Have you created an issue for the problem you found where when you were signing with local keys, uh, you were not able to generate a signature? Have you created an issue on it? Uh, yes, I think, uh, yeah. I think we, we have uh, also people working on this. Oh, I, oh, you have people working on this already? Okay, that's great, yeah. that's great. Yeah, I was able to right. touch base with Rakesh on late Friday evening. He had some good ideas on what could be done here. Can you just tag him on this one, uh, Rakesh? And he can, uh, and then he can, uh, then he can help uh, whoever is working on it if they have any questions on it. So just on this one, you can say, hey, check with Rakesh if he can give you good ideas on how to fix this. I think he had some good ideas on this one as to what needs to happen based on the brief description I gave him. Um, I think I, I want to point out that both sign and verify, I expect some things to be broken right now. We haven't closed all the PRs yet. And the PRs which were approved in some cases make breaking changes because we are making, like we are refactoring things, we move timestamping into notation core go, but we didn't integrate it yet. Uh, we have the trust policy, trust store implementation, bits and pieces of it. There's a Rakesh's PR, which implements the end-to-end -end verify. So this is probably a little early to be fully testing end-to-end -end scenarios. I, I don't think we are there yet. On this specific signing one, I'm not sure if it broke at the... Uh, or as interaction layer or layers under that, but we are still making changes to the signature envelope. Uh, there are PRs open for those. So I expect at least for another week or two till all of those, those are feature PRs, like not minor minor updates there, like or bug fixes. All of those need to be committed in and stabilized. Then we can expect end to end work more smoothly. Milad, I think in this I think case, in I think this... Uh, what uh, what he was doing, he was just signing with local keys. So he was just doing signing, not doing verification. So when you say end-to-end, -end, I think you're, you, you're saying testing with CLI, right? Is, is 
Is that what you're saying when you're saying end to end? Yeah, sign sign with the CLI. Uh, okay. Provide a, either a local key or a plugin based key signing provider, and then set up the trust policy, trust store, and then do a verify using the CLI. That that's the basic end to end. Okay, yeah, I think uh, you go ahead and mark Rakesh on this one. I based on what. Uh, was described to me by David. I briefly talked to Rakesh and he had some good ideas on what could be breaking it. Uh, and just like Milan said, it could be dependent on multiple peers, but instead mm -hmm. of whoever is looking at it, uh, be, you know, being lost, they can uh, have, I think Rakesh is, uh, yes, that's Rakesh, yeah. That's, he can, he can help guide them as to what needs to, what needs to be done. Uh, and uh, okay, sounds good. Uh, any feedback? So back to the alpha three release notes. So the way I've structured is, is try to, again, back to what David was saying, let's get something out, which is already implemented and it solves at least the sign and verify use case with a remote key store. And that's how I describe. So if you scroll down line by line, I can probably talk about the user stories I have factored in. So first of all, uh, we're talking about the specifications that we have committed to this uh, to this so far. I mean, uh, sorry to interrupt. Could you also ping that link? That uh, the link. Oh, it's in the agenda. Uh, so let me find it in the in meeting the agenda. Yeah, oh, release link. Release note. I yeah. Can post. Cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm just describing things which is already available for us to launch with, or at least do alpha three with. Uh, we, we know we have closed on the signature format. We have the updated signature specification. We know how signing and verification has to work with the plugins. Um, we introduce a new signing scheme and the new trust tool and trust policy, um, which uses the directory structure and adjacent document for the trust policy part of it with all the good things which you all have added in terms of scopes and uh, and and then different trust stores. So that's what I believe we have done from a specification perspective. Uh, from a CLI client perspective, if you translate that, what's available today or what we should march to make, make, make available. Uh, actually, I think I described it up there. I think you scroll down uh, a little too far. Can you scroll up? Uh, Uh, back to high level user stories, what we want to happen. Yeah, some, yeah, that right there. Update notation client. So these are the minimum things I want us to support. If, if again, if something is closer to being ready, we, we can include this as well. So basically sign and verify images with remote key stores. That's, that's a given. We need to have that. That's I think it's the plugin that uh, has been implemented uh, already. And then sign and verify with locally stored test key certificates for demonstration use only. So what we have today, uh, but only for demonstration use. But here I've heard a challenge on this one that this is incompatible with the new trust store mechanisms that we have. So I am rethinking about this. I'm highlighting it that uh, back to what Milan was saying, this, will, this experience will not work of verifying with a local trust store because the verification engine now looks at the directory structure based trust store. So this second bullet will not work until we do some heavy lifting. I think we can break this down further. I'll, I'll give some feedback. I'll put in some okay. comments. Okay, let's give some comments. Let's idea is to keep the ball rolling and release something that we all can use and then uh, move the other items to a later release. Okay, just give me feedback. I think at a high what... level, um high level couple of things we we call out that this locally stored test key certificate for demonstration use only yep. we'll have to add some language on what that feature looks like for rc or ga what is the production story there without that it looks incomplete and then wherever we say jws signature format couple of places we say finalized i wouldn't say finalized till we hit rc1 because we are integrating things right now, there is still potential for the spec to have tweaks and breaking changes based on whatever we find in alpha 
testing, right? Once we get the alpha release out. So RC, the release note for RC is when we will say, will not have breaking changes or is finalized. That's fair. And this is alpha three we're talking about. Okay, I can take that language. Like I can take the language off Yeah, Give me feedback on it. I will do a formal yeah. PR. Uh, before Thursday, and then uh, see if you all are okay with approving it. I think rest looks good. I'll I'll give minor feedback. Okay. Well, this may be the first meeting we are ending uh, before before time in a long time. So, anybody else has anything else to bring up? I um, did want to discuss the cert, cert CRUD commands because that came up a uh, couple of times. Uh, the blocker there is just reiterating, we covered this in previous calls. The existing cert command, cert add, remove for verifying, doesn't work, isn't compatible with the trust or trust policy. So it's it's broken. In the alpha release, we should disable it. There's no point enabling it even behind the experimental plan. It needs to be totally revamped. And the next item there is the CLI spec for that command, which will either be sort or, or trust or trust policy. We don't know in what form it will be, but it will require a little bit of investment on what that user experience should be like. So does, does that give clarity on where the cert add functionality, like what is its current state and what is the next step? Okay. Yeah, I think it's clear to me. Yeah, it's clear to me that the existing CLA commands will not work. If we want to make them work, let's work backwards and write uh, the behavior we want from those CLA commands. Yeah. And they could be net new CLA commands. We may even say these existing ones should be reworded or recrafted, but let's work backwards on what experience we want for certificates going forward. David, are you aligned with that? Uh, Samuel, can, can you write down uh, what Amini mentioned uh, in the yeah, notes? Yeah, I'm writing it right now. I think the existing commands for... Uh, I can share a link. I covered this in a discussion. You can add the link to. Cool, that sounds good. Okay, uh, I, I expect that when we meet on Thursday, we will realize that a lot of the items are close to completion or are in PR review. And then we can look at what, how soon we can do an alpha three. I personally don't see it being very far, but uh, let the board speak for itself after we close out the duplicates or, or link things together. Okay, anybody else going once? Um, All right, go yeah, ahead. Samir, yeah. yeah. I add a new uh, agenda, I add a new item in that agenda. Can you open, oh. open the agenda? Okay, let's see. Working note. 
Uh, new item in the agenda notes. Yeah. Where, oh yeah. Oh, the timestamp signature time authority. Stamp, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah let's. Yeah, let's talk about that. I think what we heard from Milan say some as part of refactoring, we have moved code around. So today TSA does not work. What we want, what we agreed in a prior meeting in a different related um, PR was, we should at least support it from a sign from a signing perspective for RC one, and verification we can decide to do later. But in RC one, we should support uh, users to at least generate a timestamp signature. I think probably uh, the feedback in the last discussion was uh, from Shiva and others was the functionality was implemented for even verify. And now that we are separating out alpha one and RC one, we can, we could include the timestamping. Um, okay, going through this feedback, let me quickly address that. I think the first one is right. We said there won't be a default TSA users will have to uh, specify or uh, trust routes is right. The improvements, I'm sorry for not being clear there. Uh, I think the couple of aspects, one, the initial CMS verify code for TSA which was included in the prototype and alpha one. I don't think we had great code review at that point. We didn't do a really good job. Uh, so it's not like having the same bar as we are applying right now. And I'm not very sure about the code coverage and test cases because that implements the, it uses the ASN one encoding from Golang and then implements the CMS structures on top of it uh, and uses that to do the verification for TSA signatures. So I think, I'm not sure how to handle, handle that. Like either we could do, there is a merge PR already, which we could reuse for as a code review. And if there are any data points around test coverage, I think those will help gain more confidence in that in that functionality. Shiva, do we have feedback? Uh, so basically, we need to add more tests. I mean, unit tests. Yeah, I don't have a good idea of what's the code coverage, but I know the functionality that it's implementing is is like relatively complex, right? With edge cases, because we have, it's basically implementing. CMS verification. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, it, it's actually a CMS package. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. So it's it's like it's because he has seven uh, signature verification. Um, I would have at least a couple of tracking items against it, or three. One is integrating it with the rest. We just refactored it. Second is some kind of uh, code walkthrough, refactoring, identifying any quality changes and code coverage, adding additional unit tests. That, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, so can you uh, create issues for those things so we can track? Sounds good, I'll create issues against that. Yeah, that's good, thank you. Okay. I think this issue is clear. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye-bye.